Hey folks, it's James. It's day three of our series, How to Sketch Better with Procreate. And that means I get to share one of my favorite techniques for taking all of your presentation work, not just your sketches, to the next level. And that's with these techniques for mastering color that make it impossible to mess up. So download the original Procreate file I made for this video in the description below. Open it up on your iPad to follow along. And let's study how Procreate scientific color pickers and automatic color palette generators can take your sketches and all of your presentation work to the next level. Shadows and colors are the tools we artists use to create powerful feelings and emotions in our work. Pencils are good at recording the perspective details of these moments, but shadows and color give us the ability to record how we felt in these moments. And fortunately for us, Procreate makes it possible to add shadows and colors in insanely fast and fun ways. So you will never be short for time again, and you can add a whole new dimension to your work. Let's start with shadows. And in the place of the word shadows, I'm going to use the fancier art history word chiaroscuro, which refers to the treatment of light and shade in every part of your sketch, and also sounds much cooler than shadows. A simple way to think about chiaroscuro is as the underlying light and dark values of any painting if that painting were desaturated. For urban sketching purposes, chiaroscuro can be used to both lead the viewer's eye into your sketch, to focus the viewer's gaze on a part of your composition, as in the church steeple in this sketch, or to add depth and rhythm to a sketch, as in the case of these dark leaf ball shadows receding into the distance. There are two ways Procreate makes it easy and fun to play with chiaroscuro. The first is what I call select and fill, and I use it to quickly create the shade and shadow effects in all my urban sketches, as in the case of the shadows in this view. I say quickly because you can generate shadows like these and even more complicated shapes in seconds. Just tap to add a new layer, change the layer blending mode to multiply so you can see the detail underneath, choose a cool gray that will contrast with the areas hit by sunlight, tap the selection tool, then tap freehand, then draw the outline of the shadow shape you want with the familiar marching ants. And here I usually include both the shadow that is cast on the ground by the buildings and the part of the building that will be in shade. Then either drag and drop or fill the shape from inside the layers menu with the current color in your palette. And voila, instant amazing shadow. And because the shadow is on its own layer, you can change the hue, saturation, or brightness using the sliders in the adjustments menu to maximize the effect you want. Or use the eraser with a soft brush to lighten the parts of the shadow where light reflected from the sky tends to soften the contrast. And for those of you who like to live dangerously, there is even a third way whereby you can activate the color fill button at the bottom of the menu. And then as soon as you finish the dots, that color will automatically fill in. But I don't recommend that for beginners because after you've used it once, as I just did, it's easy to forget that it's on, hidden away down here at the bottom of the selection tool. And you can really become confused when the next selection you make suddenly fills itself in. It's not too hard to see how Procreate can help create a single grayscale shadow. But how can Procreate help you add color if you haven't worked with color before? or if you've only ever worked with a limited palette of colors that come with a typical Urban Sketchers watercolor set? And the answer is by making it easy and fun to experiment with color using the hue, saturation, and brightness sliders in the adjustments menu and the palette modes at the bottom of the Procreate palette menu. For example, if you want to choose the best color to represent how our medieval tower seems to glow against the blue Mediterranean sky, Add a new layer under your pencil sketch. Pick a good color for the sky, and don't worry, you can always change it later. Then use the select and fill method we just discussed to add that color, tapping the selection tool, then the freehand button, then tracing the shape of the sky above the buildings. Then go into the Harmony color palette. Note the color that appears opposite the blue dot of your sky. Then tap that color to select. Then use select and fill again to apply that color to your tower. It may not be the right color or the final color you will use, but it will show you what color, as determined by the physics of light, 
will create the maximum glow or vibration when placed next to the blue you chose for the sky and serve as a great starting point for the color part of your sketch. In the same way, once I decide on the color I like for the medieval tower, I can tap the brush icon, then tap the color picker square all the way over here on the left. Then I can go into the harmony palette and get help choosing or modifying the color of the big, dark, cool shadow I used earlier to frame the composition and create the mood I experienced at lunchtime on that particular day. The colors suggested by the harmony wheel may be too extreme, but with every experiment you will learn more about the physics of color, and every time you use the hue, saturation, and brightness sliders in the adjustments menu to adjust those colors in real time, you will become better at picking colors the first time. Once you establish the colors you use most often, you can tap the plus button in the palette drop-down menu and add them to your own custom palette. And don't worry, you'll still find yourself adjusting these saved colors in order to meet the conditions of light at any given moment. But collecting your favorites into your own palette will save time checking the Harmony color wheel every time you want to change colors. Now I'm going to quickly finish the color part of this sketch. It's going to take a little too long to share with you in this video. But I will make this file available as part of the assets in the description below this video. So you can open up the layers menu and study the sequence of layers I've created. And you can also re-watch this as many times as you want using the video replay feature of Procreate. And just use your finger to pause it or move it forward or backward. And it's a fascinating way to keep learning in Procreate. To go deeper on any of the things you learn in this video, be sure to check out the links in the description below. To see part one of this series about underpainting, click on the image you see here, and I'll see you in the next lesson.